Judy Woodruff, such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you for joining us. It's great to be here, Twee. It's always wonderful to come back to San Francisco and to see KQED. You know, you've been covering Washington since 1977 when President Jimmy Carter was in office. You've seen many administrations. How would you assess the political climate today compared to what you've seen? Well, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly enough. <laughs> you know, people often ask me, how do you compare this? Is this anything like other presidents? And the fact is, I've covered Democrats, I covered Carter, Clinton, Obama, I've covered Republicans, Reagan, both Bushes. I mean, it, it, we, and now Donald Trump. Donald Trump stands alone. He was not a politician. He was not in public policy. He didn't have a background in government of any kind. Uh, and he's brought this unique personality, his show business background, his reality TV background, his business background. He's a completely different kind of president. And we're all, you know, we've had to fasten our seatbelts. During this administration, the term fake news has become um, very commonplace. Um, disinformation, there's a lot of that going on out there. What challenges do those things present to you in terms of trying to do your job every day? There are enormous challenges that come with it because what has happened is it's now been planted in the minds of many Americans that they can't trust much of the news media. And it's not that the news media has ever been perfect and media reporters make mistakes, but not on a whole scale level and not uh, at, a, at, a, at a dimension that this president and others around him have, have portrayed. Um, we are, the reporters I know in Washington who cover the White House, who cover the, the Congress, by and large, are there to do their job. They're there to report the news, to get it across in as accurate a way as possible. And so this now new charge that's flying around every day where people say, well, we don't know whether we can believe you or not, has put all of us on the defensive, and I think needlessly so, but we have to now take that into consideration. We are now called on more than ever to be accurate, to make sure we provide context, accurate context, that we don't make any mistakes, um, because our credibility in the end is all we have. I know we at the News Hour take that very seriously. And you and the late Gwen Ifill uh, became the first all-female network yeah. anchor team in 2013. And, and we were so fortunate to have Gwen Ifill here just a couple of years ago. We all miss her. If, if you could take us back to that moment, what was that like, though, when that announcement was made? It was such a milestone for women journalists like, like me. Well, I, I mean, absolutely. Gwen and I had to look at each other and practically pinch ourselves because we were part of history. Good evening. I'm Judy Woodruff. And I'm Gwen Eiffel. We were the first two women to anchor together a national news broadcast. It was both a natural thing to happen and it was a remarkable thing to happen to have two women sitting there night after night mm -hmm. and it was just an enormous privilege for me. I mean Gwen was just is is somebody who will live forever. I think in the uh, her legacy will live on forever in news. She was not only a great journalist, she was a remarkable friend, larger than life personality, which I yes, know you saw. Great sense of humor. We miss her every day. And one of the reasons we are determined now to work so hard to do a good job at the news hour and to make sure uh, we, you know, that we are holding ourselves accountable is to live up to Gwen's legacy. We now have the Me Too movement sweeping the country. Um, you've been doing news for more than four decades as a woman journalist. What has that been like? Have things changed? I hope so, Twee. I certainly hope so. I, like every other woman I think I know in our business, and frankly, working woman, has had some kind of an experience with sexual har harassment, with uh, being treated differently because we're women, and yet those of us who are doing it have persevered. Now, we finally have gotten to a place where what happened was so egregious, starting with the Harvey Weinstein revelations, yeah. and then it swept across the news industry. And we now know many of the men I knew, in, 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 including in Charlie the news, Rose of PBS, including Charlie Matt Rose Lauer, and others, NBC, in, NBC. I think it's a turning point because why? Because I think enough women have come together and said we've had enough. This is it. We're going to support each other from now on. We're not going to feel like we have to be quiet. I've now I've just recently joined the board of advisors of a group called Press Forward mm -hmm. that's going to look and make sure that in newsrooms uh, across the country and and for young women journalists coming along that they know that we have their backs and that no longer is this going to be tolerated. 
And speaking of women journalists, you graduated from Duke University with a political science degree. Okay. Did you always want to be a journalist or did you want to be a politician at some point? Well, I didn't necessarily want to be a politician, but I thought I would work in politics or public policy. Mm -hmm. uh, this was after thinking I was going to go into math. And uh, that's a long story about how I got from math to political science. But I just uh, sort of fell into journalism. I had a professor who said, do you ever think about covering politics? Mm -hmm. And I did, and I've never looked back. I've loved every minute. I feel so fortunate. And in the modern news cycle now, partly due to social media, but partly just due to the digital landscape overall, is now more frenetic than ever. The chase for online clicks and um, the chase for ratings is more intense. How is news hours approach different from what everybody else is trying to do? It's important that people watch us, but what we don't do, Twee, is we don't worry about how many eyeballs at this minute and the next minute and the next minute, which is what our commercial uh, friends are doing. They have to worry about ratings. It's how they make their, uh, their, their, their money. living, their yeah. money. We have the great luxury, the great ability to sit there every morning and throughout the day and look at what are the most important stories of the day, what should we be covering, what do the American people need to know, in our humble opinion, and how can we best cover it? And that's how we make our, dis our decision about what to cover, not to be driven by the silly story of the moment or whatever is getting a lot of clicks, but to think about what matters here and what do we owe people uh, time and information to, co to cover. That's what our job is. And on a personal note, your oldest son, um, Jeffrey, was born with spina bifida. And if you wouldn't mind sharing with us what that personal journey has been like for you, and, and how has it changed the way you look at life and work? It's changed everything. I mean, he was our firstborn. We have three children. Jeffrey was born in 1981. He's now 36 years old. Born with spina bifida, something we had not even heard of. Fortunately, he had a fairly mild uh, form of spina bifida, but then Jeffrey was injured as a teenager and is now someone with significant disabilities. Mm -hmm. But what it's taught us, Twee, is that we have to treat people with disabilities as we do anyone else. They want a norm, as normal a life as possible. They want to be contributing members of our society. And I think too often people look away from them or look at them and just sort of pat them on the mm -hmm. shoulder. Uh, they want to be treated like you and me. Thank you so much for sharing that. Judy Woodruff with the PBS NewsHour, thank you. Thank you, Twee. It's just been great to be here.